Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and uh, it's my honor and privilege to have uh, a true public servant joining us today. This television show, again, is called Our Brockton, and it means exactly what it says, Our Brockton. It's my Brockton, your Brockton, it's our Brockton, it's our home. Uh, and one, one piece of our, uh, of our success is redevelopment. And the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, the BRA, I'm sure you've seen it before, either on social media or the newspaper, uh, it's it's a wonderful organization. It's led by a true public servant, Robert Jenkins. Robert, how are you? I'm well, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for having me. Oh no, no, my I pleasure. Appreciate no, no, I this is uh, this invite. is awesome. I mean, we, we, we do these these conversations um, to inform the general public. Uh, and Excellent. one thing is is usually is is again, I want um, them to know who is Robert Jenkins. Quick background would sure. be really helpful. Sure. Well, I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. Went to school at Northeastern. That's where I got my undergraduate degree, started working in Boston in the neighborhoods uh, with Mass Housing Partnership in the state. Um, then after that, I kind of went into just doing more neighborhood mm -hmm. groundwork, uh, nonprofit work. Started working with the Brockton Redevelopment, uh, Brockton Community Development, yep. one of the first nonprofit CDCs in the city. Um, at that point in time, I then got drawn back to Boston and then, um, the Redevelopment Authority called me. At that time, it was BBB under Mayor Harrington. Yes. Called me back and said, would you be interested in doing our neighborhood stabilization program? Came back, did the neighborhood stabilization program, and I've been here ever since, since oh. 80, since 09. 09, I mean. 09. So Boston's loss is definitely Brockton's gain. That's how, Yeah, that's well, it's my gain, too. No, it's uh, a, I love the city. I yeah, love the city. And, Bought and my you know first what? property I mean, here. Yeah, I mean, the thing about, um, if you don't know Robert Jenkins, you like Robert Jenkins. you got to get to know him. <laughs> He, what you see is what you get. But one thing is that um, you do your job, you do it well, you surround yourself with skilled people, but then also you do the extras. I've seen you at the symphony. I've seen you. I sure. mean, you go to community events because you're engaged in Brockton. I'm engaged in Brockton, and I've, the way I was brought up, I've always been engaged in any community that either I worked in or lived in. Brockton was ideal. It was just like being home to New Haven, Connecticut, which is a little bigger, mm -hmm. but the engagement, civic engagement, is very important to me and my family. So. Well, thank you. That's why. No, and I'm, we, I'm, we're really proud that you're here. And if you could just explain the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, what is the sure. BRA, what does it do, and sure. what are we doing right now in light of COVID-19? Sure, the BRA, Brockton Redevelopment Authority, everybody says the BRA and they think of Boston. Well, Brockton Redevelopment Authority is probably not as old, but it's been around since 1967, wow. 69. Wow. Um, it's former, and I had the pleasure of knowing um, maybe not the first, but the second executive director, who was Steve Cruz, mm -hmm. under urban revital, urban renewal at that time in UDAG and home when it first started. And so the Redevelopment Authority is the entity in the city that manages, initially managed all its federal money, uh, whether it was community development block grant, urban uh, renewal block mm -hmm. grant funds, uh, now neighborhood stabilization program, home investment partnership. So we know the rules and regulations, and we do our best to make sure that you, because you're the one who signs the contract, right. is within accordance with HUD regulations and the Congress statutes. So that's what we do. We actually manage those funds to make sure that they're applied to eligible activities and individuals. And all of the federal funds are there to serve low, moderate, the most vulnerable population in the city of Brockton. So we know, we know, Robert, how really devastating COVID coronavirus mm -hmm. has been to Brockton, physically, emotionally, sure. financially, yes. without question. Mm -hmm. So you and I have been working, uh, we're on uh, many Zoom calls, the new normal weekly. Sure. Uh, we've been having a lot of conversations about business assistance programs. Absolutely. So when you talk about block grants, the CDBG grants, yes. um, Brockton received $841,000 from the feds. Um, yep. Could you just Could maybe in, inform the viewers sure. the whole process Absolutely. and what's going the on? The whole process with that was the CARES Act. As you understand, uh, Congress passed the CARES Act. Um, through their first formula, they use a formula that they use for CDBG. Mm -hmm. So every entitlement community under that formula got an uh, amount straight from Congress through HUD. Um, the city of Brockton, as you said, got 841000 we probably should have got more, but based on the formula, yeah. we're always getting what I consider our short end of the stick. Um, however, we did a good job, you and I, especially you, Mayor, with your leadership, understanding that 
the ones that were hurt the most or the most impact were those that were most vulnerable, mm -hmm. our businesses that had to shut down for three months. So we did a business assistance program, and we know it's not a lot, but $10,000 of assistance, um, when you're shut down for three or four months and your payroll is cut, you have nothing coming in and you have unemployment, you know, we kind of said $10,000 of business assistance, you put aside half a million dollars of our COVID funds for that. Um, I think to date, I think we may have funded six applications. We've only opened up about two and a half, three weeks ago, getting applications in. I think we have 48 applications that we're going through and reviewing those now. Those applications are going through Mass, uh, mass Hire or yes. Greater Brockton. That's right. Sheila Sullivan, yep. Jardin, her office, is reviewing those applications. And so they're doing a good job. We have a committee that's reviewing those applications getting those funds out. I think I passed off to you four of them that were just funded just this week. Yeah. So we, we're we hoping to get that money out before, the, before actually November 1st. We'd like to spend all that money because HUD has another billion dollars yeah. that they haven't allocated. They don't want to use the formula. They're looking to do those communities that have been most impacted. As you well know, when we have our meetings, Brockton is like the third or second most impacted in the Commonwealth. That's right. That's which right. is saying a lot, yeah, you know. I mean, um, so we hope that HUD looks at us at Brockton and give us an additional funds out of that $1 billion. They still haven't have to all allocate out. The other important thing is that we also did something similar to the RAF program. For you folks that don't know, RAF is for rental assistance for families in transition. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a gap that they cut off, and it's usually if you're 30% to 50% of medium area income, they usually can fund you. But if you're 51 to 80%, usually there's not enough money. You and your wisdom decided, okay, let's fund that gap. And so that's gonna make a huge impact to residents of Brockton. This, this is another half million dollars that's only available for Brockton residents. And we took two pots of money, CDBG, Community mm -hmm. Development Block Grant, and Home Investment Partnership Funds, 250 from each to make a $500,000 pot. This money can go towards rents, mortgage, utilities, um, anything that you have been impacted. As far as your standard of living, if you're behind in your rent, behind in your mortgage, mm -hmm. and they will make payments directly to your mortgage company, directly to your landlord. You, I know under some of the programs you have to have a lease, but these are the details we'll work through, and we just signed that contract this week. So we that did. money will be going out. Yeah, and it's a game changer. It I is. I mean, um, you know, you talked about the $10,000, and the $10,000 uh, is a lot of money, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's going to help. And yes. it's going to help people, and that's what we need. We're in the people business. Correct. It uh, doesn't matter if you're the executive director of BRA or, or the mayor. We serve the people, and right mm -hmm. now people need help. They need assistance, and, mm -hmm. and I'm proud to say that the BRA under your leadership, that's what you're doing every day. That's what we know? try to do, Mayor, and I make every effort. To, and the thing is, is you when you're out there and you and you see people that are in need and that are struggling anyway, this really impacts them because now you know. Just look at the unemployment. Brockton mm -hmm. leads Plymouth County in an <coughs> unemployment rate. Uh, the other program is a charity guild, um, expanding the food pantry. They went from like 130 serving 130 people a month on a regular basis to almost 400. It's amazing over the last four months. Um, so we're expanding their food pantry so that they can do a better inventory, uh, make it much more organized. And then um, I forget the woman's name, who's now the executive director. Laura Street. Laura Street. Yeah, fantastic she's the woman. Best. She's she the is, best. Yeah. and she's from Brockton. Yeah, and she's a Brockton. Yeah, Brockton High grad. Yeah. So if you don't know what the charity guild is, what what Robert was just talking about, it's the old Savas Hallmark, which is on the corner of Main and Dover Street, mm -hmm. um, and. They are doing yeoman's work every single day. I took a tour uh, pre-COVID when I became mayor, uh, and I just want to thank Robert because when they applied and he asked me about it, without question, yes, because they're making a difference every single day. And uh, what Mr. Jenkins just said is 100% accurate. The increase is substantial due to the fact that people are hurting right now. They're hurting, and we need to provide the services. Another thing that the BRA has done, done it well, uh, and, and you know, one thing we didn't do in Brockton, Mayor Walsh, my good friend Marty over in Boston, put put a, a halt on construction because mm -hmm. of COVID. I didn't do that. I thought it in a different way, and I think it's mm -hmm. paid dividends. We have the Absolutely. Kresge building, we have the Ganley building, still operational, we're still moving, moving forward. forward. That train is still going down the track. Um, the BRA uh, has been a catalyst for investment and development downtown. Um, and if you could just tell some examples and some that are in the in the queue sure. right now. Well, the, and you made a it was a brilliant decision. Well, work construction work had stopped and. Boston, mm -hmm. 
those workers then were transferred to Brockton. Right. Uh, we had some developments that we thought were going to be behind. Not only did they catch up, they moved ahead. That's right. You mentioned the Kresge, the corner of uh, Frederick Douglass and Main Street, Joffrey's uh, Anatole's building on uh, 47 West, West Elm, Elm Street. That building is, I f believe, as of last week, 90% complete, yeah. half rented out. Uh, he was behind in schedule. He is now caught up in schedule and looking to open up September 1st, amazing. which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And then we have in the pipeline, 1931 Main Street. City of Brockton through City Council gave that property to the Redevelopment Authority mm -hmm. in an effort. And we finally, I mean, we I went through three administrations trying to get that yep. building sold. You finally got it done. done. This administration. <laughs> we Absolutely. got it done. Yeah. We've got it done. So it's under agreement. We're looking to move forward on that. That's another 34 units yeah. of uh, rental housing. The Petronelli just passed zoning day before yesterday. Yeah. So that's moving forward. 93 Center Street still has its issues and problems, but we're moving forward with that. We're moving forward with all of them. So it's pretty exciting. And we even have developers now that are in the pipeline. We did a request for qualifications for developers back in October. Yeah. When COVID hit, that slowed it down. However, the interest did not slow down. We actually have interviewed, and you were part of that committee selection, where we have the three city councilors from Ward Ward 1, or no, Ward 2, two. Ward 5, yep. an at-large member who's sitting on a selection committee. Uh, we've had three or four presentations, uh, three of which I think we're moving forward That's with. Right. Uh, one is um, with Trinity, I believe. The other one is with um, NeighborWorks Housing yep. Solutions. Yep. And the other one was Joffrey Anatole, who That's put right. in a second. This is his third development. Yeah, I mean, in. listen, we, we, we're, we're business friendly here. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're also looking, uh, not just residential, um, but we're also looking at commercial development. Commercial development. Um, but you also have a couple other properties um, uh, on Frederick Douglass as Correct. well uh, that mm -hmm. are under the care and custody of the BRA that, mm -hmm. that are still in the queue. Still in the queue. Um, the, what I call the purple building, which is the one that's across from the new construction and also across from the Grayson. The Grayson. That's also being looked at by two developers as well. Um, just while before we got on here, I got two calls saying, is the request for qualification still open? We, t Of course. Yeah. If you guys are qualified, do you want to put in an, an application or a request for qualifications? Have a property in mind because it's still up on the Brockton Redevelopment website and the city's website, the planning department's website. Yep. You can take a look at that and come in and talk to us at any point in time. Yeah, I mean, we welcome that. And, and we're starting to see uh, a real commitment from local developers, but also mm -hmm. developers coming in from the city. Mm -hmm. And I, I say this, and I mean this, not just because I was born and raised in Brockton, but Brockton really is a wonderful community. But it's also geographically situated, 35 minutes. You get on any of the train stops here, right? You got three stops in the commuter rail. You get into the cell station in about 35, 40 minutes at the mm -hmm. most. Um, a lot of people that are young professionals are coming here Absolutely. because the price point makes sense. Price point right? makes sense. I mean, rent in Dorchester or Charlestown or Southie or even Quincy and Braintree. Up here, Absolutely. Brockton is level. It's beautiful. It, it is, really it is. is. And, and that's another beautiful example of the city. Um, it's hard. I, I remember going into your office and saying, well, we're looking at doing studios at the Grayson yep. from anywhere to 9 to 1200 for studios. Someone said, well, that's a good price. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm saying, well, it's a good price, I guess, and they're making the market work. It's amazing because you go to Mattapan, Roxbury, Dorchester, Southie, you're paying for the same square footage anywhere from twenty five to 3500 that's for right. a studio. That, and, and that's eye-opening right there. And, and yeah. you know, what I, what, I, what I wanted to just uh, share with everybody here, so, so Robert, yeah, he's the executive director of BRA. But he's over at City Hall, 45 School Street, probably <laughs> more than he's in his own office because there's a, there's a relationship. We have to have that and relationship. A, yeah, collaboration. Yeah, the communication and, and the fact that we have a good team. Yes. Your office, the planning department, yes. even with our new, um, not new, but our task force that yep. we talked to today. Yeah. Was it today or yesterday? Life, yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. The quality of life. We have a good team and everybody wants to make the city better. That's right. And that's what our goal is. It, there is this city is really... And I call it the great city of Brockton. Whenever I go away, because I do conferences all across the country, it's the great city of Brockton. Uh, everybody knows Brockton because of Rocky Marciano. Yeah. Everybody knows Brockton because of Marvin Hagler. Right. It's the great city of Brockton. There's opportunity here, and you, you've seen it, and we've seen it. This is not the first time we've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, it, not it, at it, all. And, and again, I mean, I, I would love the viewers. Um, if you have any uh, any other questions after you watch this, mm -hmm. you can always go to the city website or the Instagram or Twitter. 
uh, or the BRA, BRA's, website. Yeah, BRA's website at all. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the mayor's office is 508-580-7123. City Hall is reopened again, right? Um, the libraries are reopened again. Council on Aging Senior Center, because of COVID, I have not opened that up yet. It's, you know, the most vulnerable population, but the city pools are open. So we're really starting to tee things up, right? But we have to be safe, maintain the social distancing. Robin and I are social distancing. <laughs> Uh, wear that mandatory mask. Uh, again, 268, as I sit here, 268 residents have perished, have died because of COVID. So, um, you know, we can't afford to be like the southern states in the Correct. nation where they're going up the wrong right. way. We need we to do. level off and go down. So, absolutely. Um, any last thoughts you might have to, uh, sure. to share? Um, absolutely. If anyone's interested in our COVID activity, uh, we now have the uh, COVID activity that's up on the website. There's a tab called COVID-19. Pull down that tab, you'll see all the information in regards to the COVID, COVID funding. We also have the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, yep. and the regular home funding. If you go under CDBG or home, we have our now our annual plan for 2020. Mm -hmm. You can look at that and review that. Public comment period is over, but we're still going to leave that site up because we have a waiver. Usually it's 15 days, yep. but they've waived it. So it's five days. It ended yesterday, but we're still looking for public comment. Absolutely. All right. Um, the other thing I just want to touch base is the fact that we've done more public facility funding this year, probably than we have in the last five or six years mm -hmm. is really amazing, Mayor. Um, you funded the uh, housing authority, one of their towers needed an elevator. We funded that. We did also Father Bill's Women's Entrance. We also did Family Community Resource Center and the Charity Guild. We funded a lot of yeah, public have. facilities that really do need it. And they make a difference. And they make a huge yeah. difference. They yeah. make a huge difference, Mayor. The other thing I'd like to talk about is just our downtown district. The fact that we have so much going on, I went to my doctor that's over in Liberty Street, and I told him who I was, and he said, there is so much going on in downtown Brockton. Yeah. What is that building that's going up as you come down Belmont Street and face? I told him it's a brand new building yep. by the state yep. uh, for transitional assistance, but then he said, I drove down the street and there was another building on the right. And I said, yeah, that's gonna be a residential building. He said, I heard there was something on, on West Elm Street. I said, yeah, that's another residential building. Um, and everyone knows about the new garage. Right. The, Carpenter, the, the Carpenter late, garage. Yeah, the late William Carpenter, yeah. uh, Mayor Carpenter garage. Mayor Carpenter yeah. garage that is finally finished and turning that back over to the city. There's a lot of activity in the city, downtown especially. We want to bring, bring in more commercial development here. It's going to take a little more time than it does with the residential, yep. but we believe in a philosophy that if you bring in the residential, the commercial will follow. It will, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you for your time today. I want to thank you for your partnership and what you do to Better Brockton. My pleasure. Uh, and again, I want to just thank you for watching uh, the, the installment of Our Brockton. It's been my honor and privilege to have Robert Jenkins, Executive Director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Again, if you have any questions or comments, by any by by all means, please reach out. That's what it's about. I'll thank I thank you right now, and we'll be back again soon uh, for another airing of Our Brockton. Have a good day.